He caught something. It's the largest root system I've ever seen. Oh, there's a seal coming. <laughs> I'm Nicole. My fiance Jake and I are starting our family in the rainforest of Western Canada. We call our place Como Rebi because the rays of sunlight often pour through the trees of the forest which surround and dwarfs us. We're starting our family while attempting to get off the grid and live harmoniously with nature. We're not there yet, but make a huge leap forward in this episode. Here's a glimpse of our off-grid life. The blood flower supermoon of May was having its way on the Pacific Ocean this week, causing the lowest tides we have ever seen in nearly three years we have lived at Como Rebi. While crabbing and prawning on the striker boat, we noticed sections of rock and many islands were exposed to us for the first time. In our area, there are typically two high tides and two low tides per day, happening about every six hours. We decided to take advantage of the super moon induced spring low tide to explore some oceanic caves available to us during the six hour tide window. He caught something. How big he is. Kevin, I'm gonna follow them. You got it. Alright, I'm gonna. Oh, got it. First try. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it looks good. Nice job. <laughs> oh, I just put this part on. I know you did. <laughs> Looking good. Hey, Kevin, thanks for getting up early. Everybody in the comments and say hi to our friend Kevin here who. <laughs> Trying to put this glove. <laughs> you know? Maybe. Thanks. Pretty strong. The current? No. Cool. 
There's a seal coming. <laughs> All the muscles. So did they just go underneath us? Yes. What did you find? Hey, thanks for joining us this morning. It was fun. That was uh, bigger and better than I expected. Yeah, it was really cool. 
It's like a sacred place in there. We all survived. Do you think we need to water the garden today? No, we don't need to water the garden today. So much rain. I don't even know if the camera can pick we it up. Could. Maybe I'll just water it a little bit. <laughs> oh man. Do you like working in the rain? <laughs> no comment.
Mmm. That's good. I think they turned out really good. Especially doing them outside over the fire. Add something to it. Mmm. I made it a few Roll. inches wider. Do you think uh, it's okay now? No, it has to go to 47. So let me have it. Then, yeah, okay, here we go. Just make sure the back wave goes ahead, buddy. Ready, go. Great job. Pull the, this side toward you. Oh no! I lost it. Oh yeah, these look cool. Bill Nye, the science guy, Bill Nye. It's like, woo! Why don't you and Nicole clean up your mess? Clean up your mess, clean it up. Your property's a mess, clean it up, Puma, clean it up. Well, guess what? Right now, we're gonna clean it up. Load up, Puma, load up, load up, load up. Come on, load up. Good job, bro. Good job, Puma. Come on, Kai, load up, Kai. Come on, Kai, load up. Yes, Kai, yes, yes. Are you super impressed with how fertile and black our soil is everywhere? Mm -hmm. I was talking to a guy um, last month in town. He was uh, he grew up here since he was born, and he says his uh, friend is a biologist and loves the logging process because he says that uh, what she says as a biologist that when an area is logged, um, all this mulch is formed, and then when the hemlock is cut down or the spruce, then Tons of biodiversity grows up in its place when it gets the sun, and all of the earth that is there thrives with fertile soil. And all the deer come to eat the grass and the weeds, so that the deer flourish. Then the wolves and the cougar flourishes because they have deer and, and so on. And the, when there's big trees, they kind of like shade everything out so nothing can grow and everything. And the deer can't eat the hemlock, so they kind of like go somewhere else and they they die out. And our property was logged three times, and now it's. 40 years ago with how fertile the soil is. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a discussion to have in the YouTube comments. Smell. Buckets of our own compost to mm -hmm. this tomato bed. Look at how many worms are in there. It's light and fluffy. It's amazing.
good. Our tomato bag. One of them. Any flowers you see here, pinch the flowers off without hurting the plant. Okay. The raindrops are falling on my head. You know that song? Yeah. Like I just died today. Oh, yeah. Really? yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Good. Awesome. How are the bamboo fruits? They're great. But the shiitakes are the ones we're going to grow on logs in the upcoming uh, mushroom grow room.
Okay, so right now I'm going to be flame torching the stairs. As you can see, we kind of started doing it, um, but it was also raining and it was raining for like a couple days in a row. So the steps were just too wet to try to burn them. Um, the water was just evaporating and then eventually it'd get to the burning, but it was also raining. So anyway, blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna do them right now because it's a beautiful day. Um, has it rained in a couple of days? So the steps are dry, as you can see. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna flame torch this. Jake is gonna do the actual patio part, and then he's also going to do the banister. And it's actually really freaking hot today, which feels so nice because it's been so cold. We've had to do a fire every day, every morning, um, just to take that chill off. We didn't have to do a fire, and I'm sweating. <laughs> I think it's like 21 Celsius. Um, which feels great. I'm in a tank top and it's just, ah, oh, so nice. So add a little bit more heat to that. <laughs>
What do you think? What'd you find? A little salamander. It's like part snake, part lizard, part frog. <laughs> We're super excited to finish the bunkie, including insulation and trim and roofing and aesthetics, solar panels, water catch. But until then, we're trying to get the fruit trees in the ground because they're timely. We want to get them in before the summer heat and we have some cherry trees looking really nice. Six different varieties of cherry that go down the path. And here next to the pizza oven and the new herb raised beds, we have a Halls Hardy Almond, self-pollinating. Next to the new garden bed that the radishes are popping up in. I have two fruit trees that I'm really excited about. This one is a Japanese peppercorn tree called a spiky ash or a thorny ash. And then next to him we have his cousin, the Sichuan peppercorn tree. Also very thorny, like a rose. This area next to that stellar J out there will be the, the fruit tree orchard. We already have a few things planted. Let me show you. So in today's episode, you saw me plant the Le Borgo quince. We also have the prune plums out there on the left. You saw us plant before. And then the sister on the right. We have another quince here called the champion. And then behind me, behind me is a crab apple called a dolgo. For the medicinal properties and beauty, we have a Pendula Ginkgo Biloba. And next to the pizza oven on the other side, we have a seventh variety of cherry tree. Walking up to the yurt, we have eight different hazelnut trees, different varieties, looking really healthy. Even planted two of these little guys and they just look so healthy and nice. Hazelnut milk is coming. Woodpile started and we have some miniature dwarf ginkgo bilobas. These will eventually flank a nice pergola and entryway that will lead itself into the main garden area. Next to the strawberries, blueberries, and sun chokes, and just in front of the new tomato bed you just saw us build, got a miniature dwarf nectarine. 
And this is a good uh, time to talk about how you see there's a raised bed around each of our fruit trees and I'm trying to grow them slightly above the ground so they'll not be as soggy, so they'll have better drainage. And I'm kind of enclosing each one in either a rock or a log raised bed so I can control the soil and the weeds as well. Hey, stay with us on this adventure. Have about 100 fruit trees more to plant. The garden has only just begun and we can't wait to show you as we continue on this journey.